I saw um, uh, As We Are Gods, um, which is a film about a prolific figure named um, Stuart Brand. And what's fascinating about this film is, one, I never heard of the guy um, until I watched the movie. And when they open the documentary, it's about 20 or so people saying how amazing this person is, ahead of his time. The mo he is the most advanced person walking on the planet. Um, and then they get into his story. And basically, he's a guy who grew up loving nature, went to Stanford, got into genetics and biology, then became a total freaking hippie, met Ken Kesey, did the whole Mary Pranksters thing, was part of the acid test, um, and was totally into how uh, acid would change people's lives and bring hippies together. But then when they went to the moon, he asked the question, why don't we see a photo of Earth? And essentially he had launched this campaign on this one image, like we should be able to see Earth, you're up there, we should see it. And finally NASA releases this global Earth image that's we all know, it's very iconic, blue Earth, um, blue marble. And apparently this started the whole environmental movement because people were able to see Earth as a whole as opposed to living on it and not and not recognizing we had problems with the environment and plastic and 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 things that were going on but now people had an identity to it and so he brought all these people together who cared about the earth and at the same time and there's so many things this person did but he was decided that he wanted to get into d the the d um i don't know why i keep blanking on this but d uh extinction extinction idea and he talks about how the American chestnut tree went extinct, carrier pigeons went extinct, but we kept their DNA so we could bring them back. And bringing back creatures and plant life will help us take care of the planet. So Jurassic they, Park. Yes, they talk <laughs> about Jurassic Park. And, it, and so he is on a lifelong journey to do this with other people. And there's a a scientist from Harvard who joins him on this. And they actually have discussions around the world, like planned discussions, and he gets shut down every time. They're, people think this is fooling with God. And the title of the film, We Are As Gods, is something that he used constantly in his life. And one of the most prolific things he did is he created this um, Earth catalog, which was a huge deal. And they they actually talk about it as being the web, the internet in print form. And that's why everyone thinks he's so incredibly smart because he would do this catalog. He did it for like 10 years and then he stopped and he started focusing on his other work. And they also talk about this millennial clock that they, that's been created that should last 10,000 years that they put into some mountain um, in the West and Basically, he has been on a lifelong journey to save the planet, and he's one of the other things, and they start the movie with this, is bringing back the woolly mammoth um, because they go to Russia and to this other park where it existed and the permafrost that's disappearing, um, and they're trying to bring that back, the, the, the trees back, and um, in his lifetime, he may see the American chestnut tree come back because it's already being planted. Um, and that's just like part of the film. Like there's a ton more going on, but this it's, it was fascinating. And now I know who this guy is. I'm curious how his usage of uh, psychedelics informed his other work. Ah, so very good question. So using psychedelics, as he said, it is a part of mind expansion. Um, and that you're able to think about things outside your body and, and not so much you're, you're opening up your mind. And he felt that psychedelics allowed people to come together too, especially in these parties that they did in the acid test, so that like-minded people could create new things. Okay. You know, I'm actually... Uh, Do they send you psychedelics? Send you? 
Did they send you something? Yeah, part of the watch? Uh, watch yeah. Uh, part of the festival? Did they pass them out of samples? And you know, yeah. yeah, I didn't make that list. <laughs> Damn. One yeah. thing I'm curious about, uh, I'm a big fan of the book, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I don't, and I don't actually remember him. I probably, you know, I probably saw the name, but yeah. what exactly was his role in that whole thing? Well, I'm, they didn't, they talked, he talked more about Ken Kesey and not so much about Tom Wolf. And they didn't really, they didn't mention that title, but his role is that he and Ken Kesey were very good friends and he was pretty much a part of the Merry Prankster group. And they also bring in Jerry Garcia's uh, wife and how they were all very good friends and mm -hmm. how the idea was you were at a party. And I guess this was part of the Grateful Dead scene. You never drink anything when you're around the Grateful Dead because it's probably laced. <laughs> and so that you're going to, you're going to be trippy and you might not even know it. There's a joke about the, one of the shows uh, uh, that they did with not Dick Cabot, but they used to do these uh, uh, playboy party shows. Uh, oh, yeah, back in the and apparently the Grateful Dead were on one of them and they had laced the coffee, but <gasps> nobody knew and they have it filmed. But I don't know if that's true or not, but they say <laughs> that, you know, and that's and um, this guy, Stuart, was all into it. And then he after that life ended, which ended with a party that he himself threw to end his days working on the catalog. Um, and uh, this is probably an important part, but he was also friends with Steve Jobs and the whole Apple crew. Mm -hmm. I, I would even venture to guess he might have invested in early days. He knew them all. And he mm -hmm. talked about how he actually wrote an article about how the computer was going to take over our lives and that, you know, way back when. And, you know, so they, you know, he was like this futuristic man. Um, and so that that whole acid thing, apparently all these people were part of at, in one way or another which is kind of wild because um, then he fell into a deep depression in his life. Things he broke up with his wife um, and he finally has come back to it later in life. So it, it's interesting. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to ask you if there's a dark side, like, is there yeah. a, and a beautiful mind moment? It sounds like you, you talk about that, that, that even the drugs and the psychedelics is seen more as a positive in the documentary. Definitely. Until you find out, um, he gets extremely depressed and mainly because the work he did with the catalog, which was extremely successful, um, that when he ended it, he threw a party and he made so much money that he decided to do a prize of 20 grand to someone who could explain, you know, what's the purpose of keeping this catalog around? What, you know, what is basically, what are we doing? And people went, were in a room at this party, a big one. And they kind of got hostile until this one guy basically burnt a hundred dollar bill. And he's like, we don't need money. And he ended up winning the 20 grand. He also is one of the guys who was a founder in Apple too. Um, wow. So it's just a wild group of people that this guy, and it's a Stanford world too, I think. And in Haight Ashbury. <laughs> and it's just this interesting group of people that created a lot of things in our life and are continuing to understand what it is we're doing, um, but the but the work with you know bringing back the genetic possibilities of fixing things, and that comes back to the title and his sort of motto is very controversial. And even Peter Coyote was in one of these discussions, and he gets up and he's like, "I don't believe." He cuts him down, and you're like, "Whoa!" You know, and he it's depressing for him. Yeah. 